Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What are the announcements of the church? Do they have any announcements? So, uh, Bible study uh, to, uh, Monday, 12 o'clock at uh, Delphi Church. Uh, that's still going on. Mm -hmm. right, uh, we're in Exodus. Exodus. So uh, there's a need for uh, signing up for a coffee fellowship. Uh, it brings some goodies. Uh, just be here in time to make the um, coffee. Thank you, Sally, for today. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It's just uh, get the coffee cups ready and stuff like that. So if you're so inclined, please sign up. I think we have a sign-up sheet. Out, uh, out there by in the library. Is there going to be a um, Bible study today? No. No. Okay. One day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought there was Bible studies on, on uh, no. Sunday. Okay. okay. Uh, Trunk or Treat uh, is going to be Halloween. Uh, Pastor Grace has said they had an amazing response last year. And they're in need of uh, candy donations. So if you uh, would like to donate, uh, there's a basket out here. Just bring some candy. I think we're going to get together with Congregational Life and put them in small uh, plastic bags. And we pass them out. Uh, that way we kind of keep things a little sterile during this time. Uh, kids will have a mask on. Uh, so will the adults, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're in need of a uh, candy donation. It was a big turnout. It's a great way that this church uh, gets out in the community. We know that we're pretty active. So we're talking to like the lots, big donations. Big donations. Yeah, we want to be the ones that give the good chocolate and stuff like that. Yeah. We're known for that. Uh, October 18th, the uh, session meeting that is next weekend, uh, right after church. Any other announcements? Thursday Bible study at 5.30 at Pastor Grace's house and uh, Chaplain Tony. Thursday, 5.30, be there. They're in First Kings. You might even need Elvis. Elvis. Is that me? The king. The king. You ain't nothing. The third, uh, we're, I'm just opening this up. The third Wednesday of November, we're also going to have just a, uh, a Thanksgiving meal. And this is uh, generally for the Oasis, but we would love for you guys to come. Uh, Kevin Clark's going to be making the meat, and there's just, it's just going to be a, a, just a nice, relaxing time and a good way to fellowship. So just be with us. We, uh, be with us. Be with the Oasis family. We would love to have you. So that's the third uh, Wednesday in November, right before Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, we welcome you. Uh, is there a minute for mission? Good morning. I just want to stress again that uh, the donations for the candy for drug treats and the pigs are still traveling around Carroll County. They are currently in Delphi. Um, the people there are seeing them for the first time, and they are really enjoying that. And um, that's all that I have for now. Thank you. Say with me the opening prayer. <sighs> Through the ages, oh God, you have called to us to follow. You led us to freedom, to hope, and peace. Enter our hearts again today and lead us to your 
revealing love, that we might serve you joyfully in this world that you have belonged to us. Amen. Let's begin our worship songs together. We have three in a row. And when you get to the third one, Spirit of the Living God, I believe it is, there are ex... Am I on? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. When we get to Spirit of the Living God, there are some extra verses that we have not seen before. So we may stop a little bit when we get there and take time to look at those words, because if they look like they're not going to fit in there, but they do. So let's stand as you are able and let's glorify the King of Kings.
my place. Let's go back there to cleanse me, teach me, hold me, reach me.
for my mother, Joan. She, uh, after she had a uh, very tricky back surgery several years ago, she contracted an awful uh, MRSA infection and almost passed away at that time. Well, that has left her very prone to other infections. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a severely swollen foot uh, that she's trying to deal with after coming off of two weeks of dealing with other swelling in her legs that uh, when diagnosed at the emergency room they gave her medications that triggered severe reactions almost like shingles oh. and uh, for those of you who suffered through chicken pox or shingles you know it's uh, not an easy thing so she's having a very hard time right now so i'd appreciate prayers for her health okay, so that's for john uh, swollen foot and after she has had a, an issue with MRSA it's very prone to infections and so this looks like shingles in her foot and leg. Yes, uh, Ruth. We're just glad to have Doug uh, Lorraine with us this morning. Yes. yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad you wanted to and you made it pleasing for us 
and you created us in your image because you wanted to, and we are thankful. Lord, you have given us your Holy Spirit to be dwelling within us and around us, to comfort us in times of sickness, to encourage us, to give us hope, to help us share hope and life with others. Lord, we tend to forget that the Spirit is always in our midst, never leaves us. And we ask now, Lord, for the comfort from the Spirit, from the Holy Spirit, to be with each of these who are ill, each of these who are suffering from issues with viruses, with cancer, with thyroid, or with various health issues. We ask that you would be with them. Lord, that your arms would be wrapped around them. Lord, we want full healing. We want healing for Joan's foot. We want healing for Debbie's heart, for Amanda's thyroid, for Dan's virus, for his body, for Kenneth's cancer and his vertigo. We want healing for Kirstie's transplant issues, for Penny's health issues. And Lord, we want them now. We don't want to wait. We want to see you move now. But Lord, we know that all of this is in your perfect timing. And whether the healing be by just a thought, or whether it be through the hands of the physicians and the work of the medications. Lord, we just ask that it be so. But Lord, we ask for even a greater, greater gift is that none of these would lose their faith or would struggle with their own faith, but that their faith would be strengthened by you in the midst of these struggles in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the memories and the grieving. In the midst of the loneliness. That your presence would be known. And that faith would be strengthened. And that they would be lifted up and encouraged. Lord, we pray that Kirsty would know that your word tells us that you walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. And you are walking with her. Just as you are walking with the Duff family. Lord, however long the journey takes, you are with her. If it takes baby steps, or if just one day she looks up and realizes that the valley is mostly behind her, and that there is some light ahead, that you are with her and that she has a church family that loves her and holds her dear. Lord, we thank you for bringing her into our midst. Lord, we thank you for bringing Doug and Lorraine home. We thank you for bringing Vinnie home so that Dolores may be here with all of her children in church. What a joy it is in her soul. 
the delight of her of her life is to see all of her children in church to worship you. Lord, may it be so for years to come. Lord, we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Master Grace, yes, we forgot to mention thanks for uh, Michelle back healthy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So glad to see Michelle back well and healthy, and it is was allergies and sinus and nothing more than that. Hallelujah. Yes. Just a praise to share that I had kind of forgotten because of other things weighing on my mind. My uh, stepmother here in Indiana, uh, Mary McLaughlin, she uh, has been dealing with COPD and, and many other issues. Uh, went to see her cardiologist uh, this week and he took her off of one of the blood thinners that had been causing her a lot of problems in dealing with her day-to-day -day life and uh, told her, I don't need to see you for another year. Hallelujah. So, little praise to share with everybody. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Which leads into our worship song. Yes. I raise a hallelujah. And for this you may remain seated and we will... As you feel led, sing along.
with me the prayer of illumination. Holy Spirit, quiet in us all the confusion and busyness that clouds our thoughts. Let us hear your word as it is read and proclaimed, so that we may be ready to serve you this day and every day. Amen. The reading today is uh, Ezekiel 28, 11-19. The Lord spoke to me again. Mortal man, he said, grieve for me. Grieve the fate that is waiting for the king of Tyre. Tell him what I, the sovereign Lord, am saying. You were once an example of perfection. How wise and handsome you were. You lived in Eden, the garden of God, and wore gems of every kind. Rubies and diamonds, topaz, earl, carnelian and jasper, sapphires, emeralds and garnets. You had ornaments of gold. They were made for you on the day you were created. I put a terrifying angel there to guard you. You lived on my holy mountain and walked among sparkling gems. Your conduct was perfect from the day you were created until you began to do evil. You were busy buying and selling, and this led you to violence and sin. So I forced you to leave my holy mountain, and the angel who guarded you drove you away from the sparkling gems. You were proud of being handsome, and your fame made you act like a fool. Because of this, I hurled you to the ground and left you as a warning to other kings. You did such evil in buying and selling that your places of worship were corrupted. So I set fire to the city and burned it to the ground. All who look at you now see you reduced to ashes. You are gone, gone forever, and all the nations that have come to know you are terrified. Afraid, afraid that they will share your fate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will the children come over here? Good looking, good teeth, 
Now smile. You know, stand up straight. You're perfect. You're perfect. Except one thing you got a problem with. God created you perfect. Except the thing is, you know it. <laughs> you know it. And the problem with this person that God's talking about is that you knew it so much and you decided I was going to be better than everybody else and I was going to be better than God. I was going to raise myself up above God. No, that's what I was thinking. <gasps> you think? <laughs> oh, go sit back there. <laughs> You're catching on. So, is it if you are good looking, if you are the prettiest girl in school, if you are the, most, the smartest kid in school, if you are the fastest kid on the track team, are you supposed to be, are you supposed to just kind of strut all over school, look at me, look at me, look at me? I came in fifth. I came in fifth out of 27. Are you supposed to go look at me, look at me, look at me? No. No. What are you supposed to do? Be nice. Be nice. And who are you supposed to say, hey, I came in fifth out of 27 because of what? Uh, Jesus helped you. Because Jesus helped you because God made me fast. Oh, he believed in you. He believes in me. He made me fast. He made me good looking. This is all because of God. This, I, I did not create myself to look this good. I did not create this pretty hair. God gave me this pretty hair. I did not create this pretty smile. God gave me this pretty smile. Did you give you, did you, when you were born, did you give yourself that pretty smile? <laughs> no! Who gave it to you? You could smile different. God. God. You can either got those teeth or, or you got that smile or you don't. Yeah. It's, it's either you've got the walk or you don't, you know. It's, you, either, you either were born with it. I mean, there's some things that can be taught and you can have plastic surgery and all that. But there's things that God gave you. Gave you speed to be able to run fast on the track team. Gave you a good arm where you could throw candy all the way to the back aisle. Martha's got that big, that strong arm where she can throw candy all the way to the back aisle during trivia contests. Or for how feel huh? Intelligence. He gave you brains and you can use them. Or you can decide, do I don't want to use my brains. So it's you choose how you do you want to say, God gave me this brain and God said I can use it. And I'm going to use it to glorify God. And I would say that there are some quotes here in town in a certain coffee shop yeah. about some very smart people that said, God gave me brains and he said I could use them. And so they did some wonderful, magnificent things and they gave God the glory for it. So, let us pray that you would not become full of yourself, but would remember to be full of praising God for everything you are and everything you're able to do. Okay? Let's pray. And if you're pointing the finger at somebody, remember you've got fingers pointing right back at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dearest Heavenly Father, I thank you for each one of these kids here. I thank you that they come from a family that mom and dad that love them so much, that want them to learn of you, that want them to know who you are and how much you care for them. Lord, may they grow to know that you are the one true God and that you are all that and a box of Oreos. Lord. May they give you the glory in all of their success in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so Judah hit it right on. Shh. Judah hit it right on. So... This person that is being talked about that had all of these beautiful jewels, these rubies, 
everything inlaid in gold and all of this from the day they were created. Everything was prepared. They were anointed a guardian cherub. Now, when you go and you start looking for the, the prettiest angel to put on top of your Christmas tree, when you go through and are shopping, and, or if you go online, I tell you what, go online at one of the big, fancy, fancy stores that nobody can afford. At least I don't think anybody in this town, you know, some New York City high fashion place. And look at those angels like at uh, Schwartz or... One of those big stores that I can't pronounce the name of. And so look at the angels in their that tree toppers that they have that are like four and five thousand dollars just for the tree topper. And those gorgeous angels that are magnificent. That that pales in comparison to what Satan looked like. Satan was the most beautiful of angels. He's not the red pitchfork devil that we conjure up in our mind. He's the most beautiful of angels. Now the prophet Ezekiel, he is talking, he is being given this prophecy from God. And it's like I said in the original Hebrew, it's kind of a, a double thing there going from the talking about this king here who got so full of himself and also talking about Satan. That he walked with God and he was right there with God. And then he said, oh, wait a minute. I look good. I can do all this. I will lift myself above God. And he got other angels to follow him. And so one third of the angels fell. Now then, let's turn to the book of Luke. To the 10th chapter and the first three verses. Jesus has been teaching and he is about to send 72 of the disciples out. Now we know about the main 12 disciples, but here he has gathered up. There are lots of people who are following him, but there are the 12 that are the inner uh, circle of friends. But now he has 72 that he is anointing to go out. So, chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. All right, so he's telling, you know, there's all kinds of evil things out there, and I'm sending you out, but you're to follow my word, okay? Now we're going to skip over to verses 17 through 20, because he talks about a lot of other things, and then he gets back to the 72 come back. And they're rejoicing, and they're excited to tell what all they saw and what all they did. The 72 returned with joy. They are excited. Dead. Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. Now Jesus anointed these 72. He put the Holy Spirit on them for a time. And he said, go, all 72, not just 12, 72 of them. And he sent them out. He said, even the demons submitted to us when we said, in Jesus' name, the demons fled. And here's Jesus' response. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now here's where we get the Greek and some of the, the verbiage and some of the verbs and the nouns and all of that. It's got this double thing going here. He's talking about what he saw, what Jesus saw in heaven where Satan is cast out, was cast out of heaven when he got all full of himself. Okay? And it's also talking about when, as they were bringing people unto the knowledge of Christ, as people were being brought into this knowledge of Christ, Satan was losing ground. Satan was 
having to back up. He's losing ground. He's losing authority in the heavenly realm. He's just having to crouch back just a little bit more and just a little bit more. And Jesus was seeing that as well. He's like, I saw it. I know you did. I saw it. But he tells them, he says, he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Now, he, he, he's talking about yeah, snakes and scorpions, but he's talking about, I'm, I've given you the authority to trample on the evil. However, don't rejoice. Don't get all, all rowdy about that the Spirit submit to you. But rejoice that your name's written in heaven. That's the thing to get all excited about. Your name's written in heaven. Okay. Now, Jesus saw Satan fall. Go to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 14. The Israelites are in bondage in Babylon. God is speaking to the prophet Isaiah. Verses 3 through 15. Now, I want you to understand that this imagery of what is happening to Satan, while it's being talked about in different places in the Bible, well, let me get to that. Let me get to that. Okay. Chapter 14, verses 3 through 15. On the day the Lord gives you relief from suffering and turmoil and cruel bondage, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. And in Revelation, we see the king of Babylon is also uh, symbolizes Satan, the one who is opposed to God. How the oppressor has come to an end. How his fury has ended. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows, and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggressions. Anybody heard about all these people that are being arrested in China for having a Bible? For asking to purchase a Bible? Is that not the work of Satan? The Lord broke the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples. All the lands are at rest and at peace. They break into singing, even the pine trees and the cedars of Lebanon. Now understand, the cedars of Lebanon are not like our cedar trees. They are something magnificent. They have roots that go deep. They have their just these huge, magnificent trees. But even the seed and the pine trees and the cedars of Lebanon exalt over you, and they say. Now that you have been laid low, Satan, no woodsman comes to cut us down anymore. We can stand tall again. We will thrive again. The grave below is all astir to meet you at your coming. It rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you. All those who are leaders in the world, it makes them rise from their thrones. All those who are kings over the nations, they will all respond. They will all say to you, you also have become weak as we are. You, you've become like us. These kings that were, these leaders of nations who were so greedy, that accepted bribes and accepted kickbacks and filled their own pockets instead of helping their nation, who left their people without food, without Medical care. But they were sitting lavish in their palaces. Those are now brought low into the grave. All your pomp has been brought down to the grave along with the noise of your harps. Uh, this might upset your lunch plans. Maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. You just thought you were all that. Look at you now. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, sun of the dawn. 
You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But, but, you are brought down to the graves, to the depths of the pit. Those you see who stare at you, they ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth? Is this the one that made kingdoms tremble? Who made the whole world a desert and who overthrew its cities and would not let the captives go home? Is this the same devil that we were all so afraid of? He's nothing. He's nothing. Now part of what I want you to understand is that last week I left you with everything in Genesis, everything in the Garden of Eden was good. There was lots to behold. There was beauty. There was animals. They were you know, everything, it was like a big petting zoo. I mean, with hippopotamuses and giraffes and all this sort of stuff. And Adam and Eve were happy and they tilled the ground and they enjoyed it because the ground was not hard. It was easy. It was easy. It was like going straight into a bag of miracle Grow and just swapping along and plant the seed and they grew. You didn't have to worry about was there too much rain, not enough rain. Oh my gosh, it's so hot out here. It was perfect. It was good. And that's where we ended with chapter 2 of Genesis. Everything was good. And next week we'll get to chapter 3 of Genesis. This beautiful angel of, Satan, of God. This most beautiful of angels of God. That decided he was all that. And he was going to make himself bigger than God. All of that happens between the end of chapter 2 and the beginning of chapter 3. Now we do not know how much time in our sense of time passed. Was Adam and Eve going about their daily routines for days, for weeks, for months, for a few years? We do not know. <clears throat> but all this was happening in the heavenly realm in which there is no sense of time. That Satan was getting filled with himself. He had been created perfect. He had all the rubies. He had all the emeralds. He was magnificent. And in Isaiah, the prophet tells us that in the end, he will be brought low will be in the pit, nothing but ashes, the maggots and the worms. All the chaos that he causes now will be to nothing because God wins. God wins. We have nothing to fear from Satan because he will be made to be brought low. There's a song that's out on the radio now on Kayla. It says, when did Satan and his demons tremble when that stone rolled away? Just how much fear was in their bones, was in their being when that stone rolled away. We have nothing to fear. And all the chaos that's going on in this world, and all the chaos that's going on in our election system, and all the chaos that's going on with the virus, how bad is it? It's a, is it a hoax? Is it this? Is it that? Everything that's going on, God wins. God wins. And as long as we hold on to that and we share that and we keep the Holy Spirit inflamed within us,
God wins. Because every time we share the Holy Spirit, we share Jesus Christ with someone, Satan loses authority. He has to step back and step back and step back. He loses more and more ground. And Jesus Christ wins more. And in the end, he wins it all. Let's pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we know the ending. But Lord, we become distraught here in the in-between. Help relieve our fears. Help relieve our anxiety. We know at times it's especially hard on the young people who all they are seeing is the anxiousness and they see easy ways out. Be with their families as they seek to guide them. As they help them to be strong in you. To help them know that the winning team is yours. Guide us now as we conclude this service as we sing the final hymn that we would be in your will. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
right. He has said he would not leave us until the end of the age. Go into peace this day. Go into peace throughout this week. Sharing the good news that the Lord wins. That Jesus the Christ is the Savior of the world. And share all the love and the mercy and his grace and his abundance with everyone you meet. In Jesus' name, amen.